I love Islam. 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 الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله Welcome back to our program I love Islam and it's your favorite uncle back on screen again alhamdulillah azza wa jal so wherever you are in the UK in America in Canada in South Africa even if you're in Europe in the Arab nations in Asia or even if you are watching from us uh, from the moon or the planet Pluto welcome to our program I love Islam inshallah azza wa jal we've got a very beautiful lineup today and we've also got a guest in the studio and he's going to be reading a nad mashallah azawajal it is none other than ubaid raza assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam how are you you okay mashallah azawajal ubaid's going to be reading a kalam for us as well so the first thing is we're going to have the quiz of the day i love islam i love islam i love Islam. Mashallah, that is the quiz of the day. It is slightly, uh, I'm not going to say it's very hard because I don't want to be giving a very hard question to my nephews and nieces, do I now? Yeah, so the question is slightly uh, hard, but it's slightly easy as well. Do you get it? Like it's hard, but it's easy, it's easy, but it's a bit hard. Yeah, it's one of them type ones, yeah. So the question is on the screen, you can see it there. What are the three types of Hajj? There are three Hajj, we call them the three types of Hajj. Which ones are they? Like I said, it's not that hard. But you know, you can ask your parents, your mom, your, your, your dad, your grandpa, and your grandma. Ask anyone you want, even your next door neighbors, ask them. What is the answer for this? And we'll jump to our first segment of today, which is called Story Time. I love Islam. I love Islam. I love Islam. 14. MashaAllah, Azzawajal. The story time for today is and the topic we've got is about good benefits of good actions. Why do we do good actions for? What is the benefit? Remember, the benefit is that Allah Azza wa Jal will reward us. And sometimes you, by, you end up doing something really good. And then what will happen? Not only will Allah Ta'ala reward you, but you will find a satisfaction in your heart as well, that I did this as well. Now, Alhamdulillah, there's a story about, I think I mentioned this story before, but I mentioned it again, it didn't cost me anything. Yeah, there was a few friends and they came back from Madrasa and on the way back home, they came across a field. And when they were walking past the fields, they saw this old man and he looked like a very poor man. And he was busy working in the fields. And these kids, they thought, oh, guess what? Let's play a trick on him. And they, they, they started, uh, uh, you know, talking amongst one each other. What kind of trick are we going to play on him? So one of them comes up with an idea. I know what. Let's play a trick and we'll hide his shoes. Was that a good trick or a bad trick? Not very nice. It's it? not very nice. Yeah. So that's brilliant. Yeah. You got it right. Correct. Yeah. So it wasn't a good trick, was it? So what them kids, yeah, 
out of one of them children, there was one, that child was very pious, very down to earth, a good, mashallah, character one as well. And he said to his friends, you know what guys, rather than playing a trick that will harm him, or it will make him hurt his feeling, why not do something that will bring a smile to his face? And they said, oh yeah, so what are we going to do then? He goes, instead of hiding his shoe, I've got two coins in my, in, my, in my pocket. What we'll do is, we'll put one coin in each of the shoe, and then we'll see when he wears the shoe, how his feeling will be when he finds this coin. And he says, I will give this coin to him because I want to help him. He looks like a very poor person. He's such a hard worker. We don't want to be causing any, car, any, any harm to him. We don't want to break his heart. So they all decided, yeah, that's a good one, that. So what they did was, all of them, they hid behind the bushes. And that boy, he went and he took that coin and he put in one shoe and then he put the other one in the other shoe. And they all hid behind the bushes. Now this old man, he was sweating, he came and you know, he looked like he was a very, very poor person. So he came, he saw his shoes, and as he was about to put his right shoe in first, he read Bismillah Rahman Rahim. He put his right foot inside. Why did he put his right foot inside first? Because that is the Sunnah that we learned this last few weeks ago, didn't we? That if you put your right shoe first, that is the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So as he put his right foot inside first, <gasps> he stopped. Because he could feel something under his foot. And as he was there, he goes, I can feel something. And he took his shoe, his, uh, his foot out the shoe, and he saw a coin. And he says, Ya Allah, I thank you. My children were, being, we were hungry. We haven't eaten a proper meal for so many days. With this money, I could buy food for my children. And he was so, you know, thanking towards Allah. He was there crying. And then he put his left shoe in first and then guess what as soon as he put his left shoe on first again he felt something he took his shoe out his foot out and he found another gold coin and he's again he started to cry and he says ya allah how can i thank you my children have not had proper clothes to wear now with this money i can go and buy clothes for my children so he was so happy he was crying making dua and all of the friends that were hiding behind the bush, they were all crying as well. And when the old man left them, the old children, they, had, they, they said to each other, we've done a trick on him, but we've done a very good deed. Maybe Allah Ta'ala will reward us. Now, what is the reward for a good deed? It says that the scholars have mentioned that every good deed that a person does, Allah Azza wa Jal will reward that person. It depends when that good deed was done, it depends where that good deed is done, and it depends how that good deed was done as well. Now there were three people, how many people were there? Three. Just checking, you're not sleeping. Yeah, so there were three people and they were traveling and they came across a very big cave. You know what a cave is? It's a mountain with a hole inside. It's called a cave actually, yes, thank you. Yeah, so they went into that cave and then all of a sudden, a very big boulder, do you know what a boulder is? It's yeah. a big stone. Yeah, easy. Yeah, so that big stone came in front of the cave and blocked their way. And they were there like, ugh, ugh, pushing that stone away, but they couldn't push it away. So what they did was, they remembered a saying, you know, that if we have done something good that Allah Ta'ala has accepted, maybe we can ask Allah Azza wa for the wasila of that good thing, for the benefit of that good thing that we've done, Allah Ta'ala remove us from this difficulty. So one of them, he starts to make a dua and he says, Ya Allah, one day I did this good action. If that was accepted in your court, Ya Allah Azza wa remove this stone from, the, uh, from our way. And then suddenly the stone smoothed slightly. And then but it was still, it wasn't enough for them to go out. So the other one said that, Ya Allah, so and so day, Ya Allah Azza wa I did this good action only for your intention. I didn't do it for people to show off in front of them. I did it for your sake, Ya Allah. If this good action is accepted in your code, then Ya Allah Azza wa remove this stone. 
And as he said that, the stone started to move more, but it was still not enough for them to get out of the cave. And the third one, he stood up and he made a dua that, Ya Allah Azza wa Jal, so and so day, I did this good action, I was going to commit a sin. But Ya Allah Azza wa Jal, I stopped committing that sin. I did not even go towards that sin because Ya Allah, I feared you. Ya Allah Azza wa Jal, if that was accepted in your court, then Ya Allah Azza wa Jal, remove the stone. And then for the third time, the stone started to move more. And now there was enough room for these guys to jump out of that cave and they saved their lives. You know, so if you look at it, they must have done that good action so many years or days ago, but that good action came into use. Remember, whenever we do something good, it is never ever wasted. One day, that good deed will benefit us. Either it will benefit us in the dunya, or it will benefit us in the hereafter. Inshallah, Azza wa Jal. Let me just put my phone on my stand, because I have a few messages that are waiting. Ji, let me read them messages and then I'll talk about this topic inshallah as well. Salam, my name is Habiba binti Wasim Ahmad and I live in Blackburn and the answers to the question is, she's got it right, mashallah, brilliant Habiba. Next one, salam, wa alaikum as salam. My name is Hafiz Mustafa Raza, I am 13 years old from Accrington. The answer could possibly be, oh my God, it's not possible, Hamza. It is the correct answer, mashallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa alaikum as salam. Inayat Raza from Dewsbury. And he's got, oh my God, Inayat Raza's got it right. He's on his best behavior in it. Yeah, uh, mashallah. We've got another uh, message, but he only gives us the answer. But we don't know who that person is. Maybe it might be a jinn. Hmm. Doesn't always have to be humans watching your favorite uncle's program. Jinns watch it as well. Mm. Ji, salam, wa alaikum as salam. My name is Abdullah Arshad, and today's answer is brilliant. Oh, everyone's got it. I don't think we need to give a clue, do we now? Yeah, Umme Ali from Dewsbury, she's got it right as well, MashaAllah Azzawajal. Assalamu alaikum wa alaikum as salam. Uncle, my name is Abdul Ali. I am 12 years old and I am from Peterborough. And today's answer is MashaAllah, brilliant. Today's question is, today's question, the answer is from Ayan Birmingham. Excellent, MashaAllah Ayan, you got it right, MashaAllah. In Raza again, he's got it right as well, MashaAllah Azzawajal. Uh, we've got another uh, question. Uh, Ifra Hashmi from Batley. Ifra, you've got it right as well. MashaAllah, Azzawajal, excellent. And also, uh, we've got a question from, my name is Amira. The correct answer is, yeah, Amira, that is so brilliant, MashaAllah, you've got it right. But you know what? One of them, I thought that was a vegetable, you read tomato. But yeah, I do understand what you mean. Yeah, mashallah. Excellent, mashallah. Brilliant. Um, Salam Ahmad Raza from Manchester. Three types of Hajj. It was a tricky one, Uncle. Hey, oh, Ahmad Raza. Nothing's tricky in you, Uncle. I've got so many tricks up my sleeve. I could be bringing out so many tricks. But excellent, mashallah. Azul. We've got it right. Alhamdulillah. Azza wa Jal. It says, uh, Ubed, your sister's asking, when is he going to read Nath? Is that why you came for? All right, all right, come on then. Yeah, your sister's asking mm, that you need to read the Nath. And we can't say no to Manuwa, can we? So yeah, so are you ready for the Nath then? We was at home, get ready for Ubad the Nath. It's gonna be fantastic, inshallah. If you know the Nath, why not read with us today in the studio? Aye, we can. Are you ready, Ubad? Take it away, it's yours. Sallallahu alayka ya Rasool Allah Wa sallam alayka ya Habib Allah Tarane Mustafa ke Jum kar parta Hua nikle tarane Mustafa ke jum kar parta 
ہوا نکلے یو حج کو چل مدینہ کا وطن سے قافلہ نکلے یو حج کو چل مدینہ کا وطن سے قافلہ نکلے نظر جب سبز گمبد پر پڑے غش کھا کے گر جاؤں نظر جب سبز گمبد پر پڑے غش کھا کے گر جاؤں تیرے قدموں میں جانے مزترب یا مصطفیٰ نکلے تیرے قدموں میں جانے مزترب یا مصطفیٰ نکلے ترانے مصطفیٰ کے جوم کر پڑتا ہوا نکلے کرم سے اس گڑی سرکار پردہ آپ رکھ لینا کرم سے اس گڑی سرکار پردہ آپ رکھ لینا سر محشر میرے عیبوں کا جس دم تذکیرہ نکلے سر محشر میرے عیبوں کا جس دم تذکیرہ نکلے ترانے مصطفیٰ کے جوم کر پڑتا ہوا نکلے اگرچہ دولت دنیا میری سب چین لی جائے اگرچہ دولت دنیا میری سب چین لی جائے میرے دل سے نہ ہرگز یا نبی تیری ولا نکلے میرے دل سے نہ ہرگز یا نبی تیری ولا نکلے ترانے مصطفیٰ کے جوم کر پرتا ہوا نکلے رسول پاک سے میرا سلام شوق کہہ دینا رسول پاک سے میرا سلام شوق کہہ دینا قریب گمبد خزرہ تو جب باد سبا نکلے قریب گمبد خزرہ تو جب باد سبا نکلے ترانے مصطفیٰ کے جوم کر پڑتا ہوا نکلے الہی موت آئے گمبد خزرہ کے سائے میں الہی موت آئے گمبد خزرہ کے سائے میں مدینے میں جنازہ دوم سے اتار کا نکلے مدینے میں جنازہ 
دوم سے بدکار کا نکلے ترانے مصطفیٰ کے جوم کر پڑتا ہوا نکلے یوں حج کو چل مدینہ کا وطن سے کافلہ نکلے سلو علی الحبیب صلی اللہ تعالی علی محمد ماشاءاللہ that was such a beautiful کلام that he read it was written by our شیخ طریقت امیر علی سنت ماشاءاللہ میں اللہ تعالی Keep his shadow preserved upon us all the time. MashaAllah, as we're talking about benefits of good actions. What are the benefits of good actions? What is it that when you do, especially the scholars, they tell us that every Friday when a person, are you listening, Obed? Every Friday when a person does good actions, then what will happen? His actions are multiplied by 70. So try to do good actions on a, on a Friday, not just the Friday only, but try to do a lot of good actions on Friday because there is more extra reward on that day as well. Now, the thing is sometimes people think, well, it's all right. It's only a little teeny weeny little good thing I'm going to do. If I don't do it, it doesn't really mm. matter. But remember what the scholars have said, even if it's a small good thing that you do, make sure you don't leave it because that could be the biggest action or the heaviest on the weighing scale on the day of judgment. We don't want to be regretting it. It might be a little thing. For example, you're putting water in for your brother or your sister. Now, it might not sound like a big thing, but it might be the biggest that you've left and we don't want to be regretting it on the day of judgment. جی آف گو سم مور میسیجز ان شاء اللہ لیس گیا دیز میسیج سلام و علیکم السلام مائی نیم از عائشہ ارشد دی انسر ایز ما شاء اللہ عائشہ یف گار ایر رائے الحمدللہ آلسو تحسین ان حسن فرم کونٹری گار ایر رائے بریلین ما شاء اللہ السلام علیکم گرانڈاد رفاقت اے اوپ اول دن امینے ذاتس اینف ناو تانک یو نا گرانڈاد Uncle, yes, yeah, Salaamu Alaikum. I'm, I'm going to take this as a pinch of salt, all right. Yeah, it's Ibrahim Shazad from London. MashaAllah, with the correct answer, Alhamdulillah. Salaam wa alaikum as salam. My name is Hamza Hanif Attari from Manchester. And the three types of Hajj are excellent, MashaAllah. That brings us uh, to the end of our first segment. I hope that, inshallah, we'll try to do as many good deeds. We're going towards... Our next segment for today, Sunnah Lifestyle. I love Islam. I love Islam. I love Islam. 14. Gee, the Sunnah Lifestyle for today, it is about sneezing. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Allah Kulli Hal. That is what we're talking about. I, I sneezed myself deliberately because that's what we're learning about. Now sneezing, why do people sneeze? Why is it that people sneeze? And what should they do when they do sneeze? One thing is, do not sneeze loudly. You know, some people sneeze, ah, chew. The whole world gets to know, hey, I hope someone sneezed. Yeah, no, when we sneeze, we try to lower our tone. You can't stop the sneeze. Because the sneezing is a natural amal and you're not supposed to be stopping the sneeze. And then also, when you sneeze, try to cover your mouth and lower your head. You know, especially when you're reading namaz. Because I know when I was about, you know what happened, yeah? We were reading Taravi once and I was reading the Quran. Yeah, I was reading the Quran flowingly. And this person right at the back, you know, well, behind me, he was sneezing. And he sneezed so hard, I forgot my sabak and I thought, Oh my God, what's happening here, bro? You, you know, I've forgot my sabak now. You know, so I had to go into Ruku and, and I just had to look at the Quran and come back. That's how, you know, slow I am. But whenever you sneeze, always remember when you sneeze, you do not disturb people. And what should you read when you sneeze? You should say, what should you say? Alhamdulillah. You should read Alhamdulillah. And then if you hear someone sneezing, and that person has said, Alhamdulillah, then we should say, 
Yarhamukallah. I got him there, and he was like, oh, I don't know. Yeah, it's Yarhamukallah. So when you sneeze, you say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Or you can say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ala kulli hal. And then when you hear someone sneezing, and he says, Alhamdulillah, even if he says, Alhamdulillah, then it is wajib, necessary upon us to reply back to him with the word of Yarhamukallah. And then the person who sneezed, he could say, Yahdikumullah, or he could say, Yaghfirullahu lana wa lakum. But it, that, that, he doesn't have to say that. But when you, when you hear someone sneezing and they say, Alhamdulillah, then it's wajib upon the, the person hearing. And then if someone is sneezing and he's walked quite far, you're not going to say, Yarhamukallah. You don't have to shout at the end of the street because it's not important for you now. But it's always good to act upon us. How many of us will act upon this sunnah at home? How many will know this dua? You know, so it's very important that we learn the beautiful sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because that's how we need to live our lives. Sunnah lifestyle. We don't want to be wearing, you know, jeans, trousers and jeans jacket with studs on, leather jacket. You know, you're gonna, this is my lifestyle, bro. I want to be one of them boys, innit? it? Yeah, you don't have to be like that. You can be a beautiful Muslim wearing the Imam Sharif, wearing the beautiful traditional clothing. And Alhamdulillah, you could be dressed up like a Muslim. Yeah, be proud of that. Be proud of wearing an Imam Sharif. Be proud of having a blessed Dari Sharif beard. Be proud of saying Alhamdulillah, MashaAllah. Yeah, I've heard people, you know, but I've heard people say, Oh, oh, yeah, boo panna, alhamdulillah, mashallah. Eh, murad usana, boo panna. That's a changi gal energy. It's a good thing, isn't it? Yeah, make sure that your children, when they do something good, they act upon the sunnah. When you give something to someone and you take it of him, what should you say? Jazakallahu khaira. Sunnah lifestyle, isn't it? But anyway, because that's not what we're learning today, we're learning about sneezing. Now, another important thing is when you sneeze, cover your mouth and try not to sneeze loudly. Now, mashallah, azawajal, moving swiftly on, another thing about sneezing is, sneezing is from Allah. Yawning, you know, people when they get tired, they start opening their mouth, I don't want to open in front of the camera. Yeah, uh, so what happens is when people start to yawn, that is from the shaitan. Yawning is from the shaitan. It's a sign of laziness. It's a sign of tiredness. So Alhamdulillah, whenever we sneeze, we know it's from Allah. Make sure you say Alhamdulillah. But if you are in salah, offering your salah, and someone sneezes and he says Alhamdulillah, that was a habit of his. His salah will not be invalid. But your salah, if you say, Yarhamukallah, your salah is invalid, it's broken. You cannot continue with your salah. So this was our sunnah lifestyle. Now we know how to sneeze, what to say when we sneeze. We're moving swiftly forward and we are going to be going through the Islamic rulings. I love Islam, I love Islam. I love Islam. 14. We are talking actions that invalidate the Salah. There are about 29 actions that invalidate the Salah, meaning they break your Salah. Number one is talking. Yeah, so you, you know, you, you can imagine who's gonna talk whilst they're in Salah. But some people do that. They talk whilst in salah. Like for example, you know, I, I saw someone and uh, his mobile phone rang. And he quickly got here and he goes, I ring you after namaz. And he put it back. So by saying that, his namaz is invalidated. Or if someone walks inside the masjid and he says, Assalamu alaikum. And then you're in salah and you say, Wa alaikum salam. Your namaz is broken as well now. Why? Because that is what is classed as talking inside the Salah. So you are not allowed to talk inside the Salah. Saying Salam to someone. Number three, replying to the Salam of someone else. Number four, replying to someone's sneeze 
If you sneeze while offering salah, you should remain silent. However, if you say Alhamdulillah, there is no harm in it. If you didn't say Alhamdulillah during the salah, say after the salah. Number five, uttering Alhamdulillah on hearing good news. Saying inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon on hearing a bad news or news of someone's death. Number seven, replying to the azan. Number eight, uttering Jalla Jalaluhu on hearing the name of Allah. Number nine, reciting Durood Sharif, for example, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at the time of hearing the name of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. All of these nine things that I've told you, they will all invalidate your Salah. So make sure when you are in Salah, you focus on your Salah. And the way how you need to focus on the Salah is when your hands are tied, make sure you are looking at the place where you are going to be putting your forehead. I'm not saying that you got four heads, but this is what is called a forehead. Yeah. So that's why you need to look up. Assalamu alaikum from Muhammad Mustafa Leeds, mashallah. He's got them all right as well. Salam wa alaikum as salam. My name is Aman Hussein Ahmed from Burnley. I am 10 years old. The three types of Hajj are excellent, mashallah. I think all the answers that are coming through, we're all getting them right. So that's excellent news, mashallah. But that brings us to the end of our next segment. And we're going to go towards our last segment, which is called Islamic Manners. I love Islam. I love Islam. I love Islam. 14. Gee, mashallah, azawajal. We're going towards the Islamic Manners. And what Islamic manners are we going to be talking about? We're going to be talking about patience, sabr, patience. Now remember, Allah Azza wa Jal has mentioned in the, inside the glorious Quran about patience, how as Muslims we need to control ourselves, not to get angry, not to start breaking things at home. And then sometimes, you know, we've broken one plate, we've broken the other plate, we've broken the window, and then we say, Good job, I was patient. Oh my God, good job, you were patient. Why were you going to set the house on fire? Yeah, so remember, patient means to do sabr. And the, the, the most important or the most rewardable patient is when you are patient at the first calamity. If something, you hear something wrong is happening, yeah, you are be, you be patient. If someone swears at you, don't swear back at them. Yeah, don't swear at them because, yeah, you're you swearing at me, I'm going to swear back at you. Don't even do that. For the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that do not swear at your parents. And the Sahaba Ikram, they said, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how can someone swear at their own parents? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when you swear at their parents, they will swear at your parents. You are swearing at you, you're making them swear at your parents. So we must make sure that we do not swear at our parents. We do not swear at other parents as well. If someone hits you, if someone pushes you, if someone has done something wrong, what we need to do is be patient. Now, okay, here, if someone hits you at school, be patient, don't retaliate, don't hit him back, but do go and mention it to the teacher. If someone's done something wrong, which they shouldn't have been doing. They've, they've, they've pushed you, they've sworn at you, they've, they've hit you, they've kicked you, they've punched you. Don't stay calm, don't stay silent. Don't retaliate, but do tell the teachers. Make sure you don't forget to tell the teachers. Because what happening, if, if you say that I am going to be patient, sabr, I'm not gonna tell the teacher, you're giving that person more opportunity to hit you or other people again. So make sure when that person does something wrong, you do tell the teachers or the person in charge. Even if you're in the madrasa, tell your kari sahab or your api. If you are outside and you see there's some elders, make sure you tell them. Never let these bullies get away with it. Yeah, bullies are bad people. Bullies are not good Muslims. Yeah, they're not good Muslims who are bullying people. Make sure you don't let them get away with that. But do not retaliate. And there are so many stories about being patient. Look at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
You know, people used to hit him. People, Ma'azallah, used to swear at him. They used to call him a magician, a toothsayer. They used to call him, you know, many, many names. But what did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam do? He used to always forgive them. He made dua in the, in the, in the, in the, mm. uh, the city of Taif when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went there. And the people pelted stones at him. His blessed Na'lain shoes were full of blood. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam forgave them. He never retaliated. He never, you know, answered back to them. He never made bad dua for them, even though the mountain of angel came to him and he said, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, make bad dua for them. I will destroy this whole place. I will crush them between the mountains. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as we know, made a dua that Ya Allah Azza wa Jal, Ya Allah Azza wa Jal, forgive them because they do not know who I am. And subhanallah, at the time of the conquest of Makkah, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came to Makkah as a victorious person, as the person who has conquered Makkah with 10,000 companions, those people who martyred many, many Muslims, those people who forced the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to leave Makkah to go to Medina, and those people who were so bad to the Muslims, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam forgave all of them. Yeah, if you don't fight us, I will forgive all of you. And he forgave all of them. And then what happened? What happened is many people came into the fold of Islam. إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجَ In the commentary in Siratul Jinan, one of the reason of this verse is that when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam forgave all these people, you know, at the time of the conquest of Makkah, groups and groups of people came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they accepted Islam. Well, it's the end of our program, but before we go, what was the correct answer? Let's see it on the screen. MashaAllah, the correct answer is on the screen. Obad, what is the correct answer? There is three types of Hajj. Hajj Kiran, Hajj Tamattu, and Hajj Ifrad. Hajj Kiran, Hajj Tamattu, and Hajj Ifrad. That is the correct answer. Congratulations to everyone. You are all winners because you've got it right, mashallah. But today is the end of our program. I will see you next time, inshallah, very soon. Take care of yourself. And what is your favorite program, Obad? I love Islam. 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 I love Islam.